Hey y'all, it is fall and we're here with another episode of Fort Worth Ford at Ace Hardware on Camp Bowie Boulevard. My guests today include Lydia Rickard, who is Executive Director of the Camp Bowie PID, as well as Alex Misner, owner of the Sour Bull Bakery and Cafe, and Lori Burko, who is the owner of this Ace Hardware. Let's get it going. My buddy Ace is ready to get it going, so let's go. Now I'm joined by Lydia Rickard, who is Executive Director of Camp Bowie District, which is a PID. Public Improvement District. Yes, it PID is. PID 19, I think, right? Originally, PID number eight. PID number eight. Now we're, we're PID 19. We shuffle around, and yeah. I don't know all the bureaucracy behind it, but it's all good. for the people that don't know what a PID is, a Public Improvement District, explain. Absolutely. So a Public Improvement District is when a group of property owners, and in our case, it's commercial property owners, who came together 22 years ago and said, we want to increase and raise the level of services and infrastructure improvements in a corridor. So our corridor- Above and beyond what the city can- Above the and capacity beyond. Then they, yes, yes. Okay. And so we um, are six miles long. Okay. We start at Montgomery and travel west okay. to almost um, Altamir 183. Okay. So, so through the bricks under you know 30 and then all the way to Altamir. All the way through yeah. Ridgely and, and a lot of places in between because yeah. we also capture side streets and a portion of 7th Street on the uh, west side of Seventh of University. So um, within that structure, we use that money to pump back into the district just to provide additional services. Our additional services include anything from um, beautification, green maintenance, um, some partnership with the Parks Department on park improvement, and um, safety and security, of course, is a big one right now for us. Yes, yeah, we can talk a little bit about that. Um, very exciting, all the things that are happening on the PID. And this is, I just want to clarify, it's a voluntary tax that these businesses have said, we want a higher level of services than what can be provided. So we're willing to tax ourselves and come into this entity. So then it, it gives more resources. You, you talked about security. We've done a lot of things on homelessness in the area um, and panhandlers. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? I how do. You're servicing? I yeah. do. So um, we started it all off with your... Um, town hall meeting that we worked together on at Ridgely Theater over the summer. Great turnout, mm -hmm. great response. That was just kind of the tip of the iceberg. We were able to really start the education process of what what it is. And not every person, you know, out on the street is homeless and not every person on the street is a vagrant. And so that education process is really important. Um, the other thing is, is making sure that our, our constituency understands that it's going to take a village mm -hmm. and it's not going to be solved overnight mm -hmm. or eradicated at any given time. So that's really important to understand in terms of how we're dealing with things. So we started with that meeting, which was great. Um, we've followed up since we've started a series of meetings with our business and property owners and our PD, our NPOs are a part of it and they come out and have real dialogue on how to really make this um, you know, a team effort mm -hmm. to move safety forward. Because when one business is doing something that supports them coming the, right. or doesn't support them getting the services, then they'll continue. So that, that's what I want people to understand as part of what you're talking about is you, one business can say, follow all the rules and another business doesn't, and then it hurts everybody. So there's a point in all of that. Yeah, yeah. And that is that there is a human being on the that's other right. side. That's and there's right. a compassionate way at which we're dealing with it. And our city is, is fortunate to have some really good services mm -hmm. that they can or cannot take part of. So it's making sure that we open those pathways and channels to get them into those proper um, streamlines of services and not the quick fix, which is a quick meal out the back door or a $20 bill out the window at a major intersection or whatever that might be. And so that's part of that education process and it is being compassionate about it. Um, so all that to say that we've also had an, a, a little bit of an uptick in theft oppor opportunity theft and so how are we dealing with that and it's bringing the business community together to share ideas to share experiences and then for the NPOs and our privatized security which mm -hmm. we have now increased um, all collaborating and all eyes right. and one of the messages that one of our NPOs delivered in our first meeting was that 
it is up to us to take care of our brethren, mm -hmm. which there is no better line than that because if we're only going to look out for what's inside of our four walls and out our front door straight and not look to the sides, then what kind of community are we building? So I think if It's really you, not a community. It's not. It, yeah. And yeah. if you bring that full circle, that's what Camp Bay District is really here to do, is to build and strengthen our business community mm -hmm. so that we're creating a a thriving and sustainable environment for a commercial corridor that quite honestly is 150 years old. Yeah, I mean, that's that's amazing. I'm glad you brought the compassion part because that's really what it is about when you realize someone is homeless and there are a lot of city services, there are nonprofit, private services that are, we're, we're engaged with to help. Uh, so that's one of the issues of safety because people aren't going to go to businesses that they don't feel safe getting out of their car and going to. What are some of the other initiatives that you're proud of? So I mentioned the privatized security. Mm -hmm. So in October, we started a four day a week, um, six hours a shift, privatized security. Right now we're concentrated on early morning, kind of the dark hours of the morning into mid morning. And what we're doing is kind of sweeping the area and patrolling and looking for some of these overnight um, sleepers, um, homeless camps that might pop up and, and trying to just kind of do a sweep of the area to move them either into service providers or move them out of the corridor so that as business starts to open up. We also have made available and worked with our security company to make it affordable for our, our commercial entities to be able to afford security on their dime as well. Okay. Since we can't provide that to the extent of like our downtown has in the past, um, we want to make that of, of affordable and available to them. Yeah. And it's consistent when we use the same, same group right. over and over. Uh, and outside that too, we, your last annual meeting, we were able to give Hawkeye who, you know, DJ right from the radio, yes. a, a big uh, uh, award because 25 years ago he started the initiative Trees down Camp Bowie Boulevard. What other sort of initiative, beautification, other things is the district doing to just enhance and, and keep it more inviting for people to visit? So one of the things that has really happened is we've really increased our visibility and advocacy. So we put together a strong marketing initiative on how we're raising the level with Dickies literally right around the corner. Mm. And now we have this introduction of almost 300 hotel rooms right. to the district Bowie House, Crescent. and Crescent. Yes. So now we're, what is the reason for people to come westward? Well, we have all kinds of brands to celebrate on a very local level. You have restaurants that are 90 years old and Kincaid's and and um, Roy Pope and Blue Bonnet Bakery that have been on the boulevard historically for a very long time and family owned and operated. Mm -hmm. So when people, when you travel, you want to see the flavors and the sites that are local to that market. Yes, yes. Well, we want to share that as mm -hmm. well. So we put together a very strong marketing initiative. We're really hitting some very big targets with who we're trying to reach um, and who's coming to Fort Worth to feel the flavors and the, the localness of Fort Worth. And Camp Bowie exemplifies that. Mm -hmm. You know, we're uniquely Fort Worth. That's our tagline. And it's for a reason. We have, you know, all a lot of our shops are generational they're individually owned and you'll meet the shop owner when mm -hmm. you actually walk in yeah. and 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 shop there or dine there so that's one of the big things we're doing the other thing we're doing is looking at how we can enhance our green spaces in the future so what the big picture looks like mm -hmm. How are we? How are we bringing that into the fold? And right now we're right on the cusp of holidays, so right. we're entering year two of our big holiday initiative, where we have four full weekends of events. There, most of them are free and for families, and really invite that shop local kind of message. So we yeah. got a lot going on. I love it. I love it because we've done a, a, a lot of spotlights on small businesses, and really, Camp Boo Boulevard is just full of small businesses. It's, it is. You're obviously very passionate about this. What's your connection to the boulevard? <laughs> so um, my, I grew up on the boulevard. I grew up a block off the boulevard till I was 11. And then a few more blocks after that, we moved a little deeper into one of the neighborhoods. But the Bricks has really been my home since I was two. Um, and so affectionately, I look at it and I, I can see where the old Blue Bonnet Bakery was mm -hmm. when it was Harper's Blue Bonnet Bakery. And I can see the convenience store where we, <laughs> you know, schooled each other on Pac-Man, you know, <laughs> in the day. Um, so I, all those things, and now today the iterations are Curly's and mm. my 15 year old congregating there with his friends to have ice cream and hot dogs and, and share and fellowship there. And then Winslow's, of course, I mean, that's our corner hangout kind of thing. And so as the years have evolved, Camp Bay becomes a part of my fabric, but you know, it becomes a part of your fabric mm -hmm. and it becomes a part of somebody else's. 
And how are we setting that tone? So the passion for me is like, what does that next iteration look like for the next few generations? And how are we continuing to give longevity to the boulevard? Yeah, it's, it's, you talk about the history and, you know, it's the 100th anniversary of Station 18. Yes. That's, the, that's this Huge. week. Huge. So it's the oldest operating station in the city of Fort Worth. This bungalow style. Bungalow yeah, style, yeah, yeah. cute little station. Yeah. And the neighborhoods have embraced mm -hmm. it. Our businesses have embraced it. And so they'll be celebrating that um, this weekend and or next week. And I just... It, it's it's a part of that community, right. and that's really good. While we know that we need modernized services to really service today's communities, um, it's nice to know that you have a station house that A, looks like it does, mm -hmm. has been preserved the way it has been, and has personnel. Quite honestly, the chief told me, he's like, nobody ever wants to leave this station. Right. Why would they, <laughs> right? It's a great area, so, so that's exciting. But, you know, we have other exciting things coming, too, in the district where public services are related to you. So, yeah. Okay, anything you want to share? Well, I mean, we're going to move a fire station, right? That's can we right. say that That's right. yeah, yeah. Um, you say can. Station 16, um, which has been on the periphery of Como, mm -hmm. is actually moving to the gateway of Como. I'm excited and about it's this. it's going to be a catalyst, really, for how we envision Camp Bowie and Como really blending together. Mm -hmm. And as other economic development opportunities have opened up with the JPI apartments mm -hmm. happening and all of that, how are we putting city services at the center of community yeah. really is how I viewed this. So it's going to have a piece of public art wrapped around mm -hmm. it. It's uh, Horn Street's going to go through a transformation yeah. in a few years. And so this really is the catalyst for all of that to happen. And it's a center of community. And that's, if you looked 100 years ago, 50 years ago, firemen and firefighters Fire station, yeah. and police first responders were the heart of our community and yeah. this kind of returns them to that yeah I, I love that you bring up you know we worked hard to make sure that the fire station happens and we've worked hard on where it goes and the horn street uh, initiative 6.8 million dollars is going to be spent on revitalizing horn street and what that will bring back to that community is something very exciting and how it bleeds into uh, uh camp boo itself i think we've made infrastructure sexy <laughs> That, that, yes, yes, for sure. People, people are excited uh, and sexy. Uh, yes, uh, good way to put it. You kind of caught me off guard with that statement. I didn't know what to do with it, but you're right as we put it. But it's basic city services. That's what you bring it back to. And I'm, you know, we've talked about um, you know, Ace Hardware, where we're sitting right now, the community hub that people find, whatever their community is, and a fire station is one of those that people look and they they have some nostalgia for it, especially 18 down on the bricks. And people have nostalgia just for the bricks, right? Yeah. As part of that. Um, which is exciting. So um, how can residents or how can people get involved with Camp Bowie District? So our first order of business is, is engaging as many businesses as possible, mm -hmm. right? And that's really important. So um, we do have memberships. We have an, a quote unquote ink side to us. Okay. Um, this kind of like a chamber of commerce. We serve as a mini chamber of commerce. We advocate for our businesses and we do that through um, the resources of our membership dollars. So anybody, but specifically our businesses are our targets as members and you can visit campbaydistrict.com our membership page there and see we have what does the PID do what is our what are our PID boundaries so that information is there we also use some of our resources because we're trying to build um, traction with our brokers and our mm -hmm. real estate developers and we have um, business on buoy um, dot com which is our business side of us and you can see demographic breakdown and market research that really supports you know the opportunity here so those are some ways from a business side residents and um, we have we are beginning you know we ask residents to just support a our local business and our community initiatives I mentioned the holiday events. Come out and support that because you're supporting small business at the That's same right. time. Um, also, we have um, some things coming up in the spring. We're going to have our first Cowtown cleanup participation. We're going to pick about three, three to five different sites, and we'll engage some of our civic and student groups to come out and, and help support that initiative. So there's going to be lots of opportunities, but sign up for our newsletter at campbaydistrict.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Follow us on LinkedIn for a business profile. Um, we have a very engaging social media platform where we're just trying to spread the word of Camp Bowie. That's, that's wonderful. Well, you heard it here, folks. Uh, city and Camp Bowie District making infrastructure sexy again. So I think that's going to be a banner and a new tagline. Tag <laughs> but Lydia, thanks for being here. Thanks for all the work that you do to highlight small businesses and support them. 
and to keep what is a, a real treasure for the city, Camp Bowie Boulevard, thriving. Uh, it's it's important for me, for my children, your children, et cetera. Um, it really is. I have great memories growing up and, and visiting some of the, the, the businesses there. Uh, and I just want to see it for generations to come. So thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. Thanks. And now I'm joined by Alexis Meisner, who owns the Sour Bull. Welcome. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about the Sour Bull, where it's located, et cetera. Yeah, so uh, the Sour Bull is a bakery and cafe. We okay. also have a coffee shop. Um, we are right up the street from the Ace Hardware here at 3701 Southwest Boulevard in the old Busy Bees building. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Tell us about some of your, what, 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 what's some favorites there? Oh, our favorite, obviously it's the sourdough. Okay. Right? It's got to be the sourdough. Sourdough, yeah. Um, and every day we'll have our plain and our rosemary garlic. But okay. then the next the next hot item is our bagels. Okay. Um, my husband. We're taping this right before lunch, just so I want everybody to know. So it's you're making me hungry. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, so the bagels. I mean, my husband spent a lot of time to really perfect those. Mm. It started out as I want to make bagels, and he was like, "Okay, you can make bagels." And then he was like, "Wait a second, I want to do that." And so he really focused on that recipe, Man. and now it's. Perfect. It's perfect. 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 Business yep. is good. Yep. And what, our bagels are bigger than the standard. Okay. Well, what, what inspired you to start the Sour Bowl? So when I was little, I baked a lot with my grandma. Okay. And so baking growing brings up me in back. Utah. Utah. Yeah. Okay. Growing yes. up in Utah, small little town. Okay. Um, and so baking just takes me back to home. Mm -hmm. And so just getting to feel that and then to be able to do it with my kids. Um, to have my daughter in there baking with us and making bread and cookies and all the things. It's just so fun. Um, and then when, when I married my husband, he was like, I want sourdough. And I told him no, because he told me that I had to do it in a trash bag. And I was like, <laughs> not a traditional to way to make sourdough. I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> I not how I've made it, but okay. I've never seen anything yeah. that said a trash bag. That yep. he says it's not really a trash bag; it's a baking bag. Baking I don't, bag. Okay. But he said trash bag at the okay. time. Okay. So it put a bad, bad image in my head, and I was just like, nope, not doing it. Not even gonna play with it. And so, after about a couple of years, I was like, all right, I think I can play with it, but I'm doing it my way. Okay. Okay. So. In a big plastic container. Yep. Yeah, just yeah, bowls. That's how I made it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Just bowls. Okay. Yeah. I didn't do it in a trash bag. <laughs> okay. That's good. That's um, good. So in April of 22, we started our starter from scratch, 100%. Okay. And so we just kind of started rolling there. And, 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 and people that don't know with sourdough, you talk about starter, you start one and yes. you use part of that to make the next one to make the next one. Is that what you mean? Yes, that's yes. correct. Yeah. So our sourdough is just made with flour, salt, and water. Okay. And then if there's extra ingredients like rosemary or garlic, that's literally what's in it. Mm -hmm. um, there's no extra commercialized yeast or anything. We use the natural yeast from the flour. Right. And our starter is organic. Our bread is not, but we do offer an organic option. Okay. Tell us about your journey from you know, just baking to opening a storefront. Uh, so that's an all-day Okay, thing. okay. I could Short sing version. all day, yes. <laughs> um, so starting is just, we started in our home, mm -hmm. and we actually did our first farmer's market in July of 22. We did the Benbrook Farmer's Market. Benbrook, okay. And we sold out, and we were like, man, maybe we're onto something. And then we got feedback from our customers, and they were just like, this is phenomenal bread, and we want more of it. And they're like, you're coming back, right? And so we just kept going back to the Benbrook Market, and then I was like, okay, it's time to expand. Yeah. And so we... Well, uh, before we opened, we were going to three different markets every single weekend. Wow. Um, did you have jobs on top of this and you were doing, yes, okay. Yes, so I did have a full-time job yeah. at the time as well. Okay. Um, which I no longer do. I'm okay, you're solely full, focused, full time. Yes. Yep, solely focused on it's the It's the journey of every entrepreneur. So yes, it's okay. Yes. It's that's a dream. Right. Yeah. Yes. It's a dream. Um, so I'm, I'm just blessed to be able to do that dream, honestly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we, there was one weekend we sold a hundred loaves of bread in one day. Wow. So. That was the weekend that I was like. It hit and it said, I can make this a business. Yes. Okay. We were just like, we cannot, we can't keep doing this in our right. house. Right. Okay. We don't have the oven space. We don't have the kitchen space. We don't have the, the space. Okay. So. so you started looking for a space and you landed on the traffic circle. So funny enough, yeah. I was actually just scrolling Facebook mm -hmm. and I noticed that the previous tenant had posted that they were no longer going to be there. Okay. And I was like. Hey, this might be the place. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so that's where you are off the track. What I call the traffic. Most people call the traffic yep. circle right there. Yeah. What, um, what, what connected you to that part of the city? Did Honestly, you have a connection? I, I really didn't. Okay. So, um, okay. 
you just seen I, that it was. I saw that it was available, and I knew that that had been a bakery for so many years. Okay. I mean, it's just been a bakery. It's been a part of the community for so long as a bakery that it almost didn't feel right letting it be anything else. Okay. okay. And our landlord actually was like, "Yeah, absolutely. This needs to be a bakery still." So. So it seems to be working. I, I love you talk about your journey. We do a lot of spotlighting of small businesses. I have a passion for it. Owning a small business, understanding all the the trials and tribulations to get businesses open when you have a dream that you're just trying to realize at that point. Do you have any advice for people that are, I want to start a business, you know, for entrepreneurs, small business owners? Definitely. Consistency is key. Okay. Without consistency, you're not going to have Go deeper on that. What does that mean when you say be consistent? Always offer the same, like the same quality. Same Always quality. just make sure you have that, that quality that you want and don't cut those corners because okay. as soon as you start cutting those corners, people are going to notice. Mm -hmm. They notice very quickly and they are, they're sure to let you know. And they're not, they're not going to be a return customer. And so then your business is going to, to go down. So you just can't cut, cus, cut corners. You cut, just, cut corners. Yeah. Okay. Consistency and just quality. Okay. That's great. What, what about from the opening the business perspective? Were there any heart, was there any heartburn during the process? Always. Yeah. Always, yeah, yeah. yeah. Elaborate on that. <laughs> so opening the business was quite a lot more different than I was expecting okay. to be honest. What did you expect and what was the reality? I expected it to not be so many hoops. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I learned that there's a lot more hoops to opening a business, like a brick and mortar business as there was to just open in my house. Right. Um, there was so many more permits to pull. And mm -hmm. so my advice is to just call the city that yeah. you're wanting to open in and say, Hey, this is my plan. And what do I have to do to do this mm -hmm. to get that checklist? You know, you get the checklist. Yeah, get your checklist. One of the things we've done, and I've, I've heard this a lot from small businesses, it, it, we just don't know what to expect, right? We, we have this dream. We'd like to figure out how to make it a reality. Yes. Uh, one of the things that has happened is our permitting department has hired a small business per that just focuses on small businesses. I love that. And, and I, I'm hopeful, I don't know if the, that you took part, part took of any of those services, but I, I'm hopeful it helps future small businesses that want to get open to realize that. So any feedback you have really uh, would appreciate it. But what can people expect when they come in to the bakery? So what I wanted when you walk in the door is that you feel like you're walking into a Pinterest post. Okay. And I really feel like I captured that. It's okay. very just Instagrammable. It's grammable, I guess. Grammable, is that yeah, what the kids say these days? Okay, say. okay, it's okay. It's grammable. Um, and you should just be comfortable and cozy. I wanted it to be a safe place, mostly for moms. And I know it's like, wait a second, we can't say that. <laughs> but I really wanted moms to have that safe, that safe place where they can come, bring their kids, get a meal. The kids can come and snack on fruit or whatever they get and play with the toys that are there and play with each other and it be okay. Mm -hmm. And mom not have to stress about, oh my gosh, my kid is being loud and playing. Right. I want I wanted moms to have that space. That's great. That's great. Well, thanks for being here. Really appreciate you uh, being in Fort Worth, Texas. We're so and, happy to be here. Oh, good, good. And, and opening your, your place here. And I wish you the best of luck. And, um, you know, you're, you're making me hungry already. So <laughs> thanks for being here today, Alex. We can't wait to have you for lunch for the boar's head sandwiches. Yeah, boar's head. Sa boar's head. Boar okay. Yeah, well, we use boar's head deli meats and cheeses. Okay. That beautiful company. Okay, great. We'll Quality. be over soon. Quality. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Now I'm here with Lori Burko, who's the owner of the Ace Hardware on Camp Bowie Boulevard. Welcome, Lori. Thank you for having me. Of course, this is so fun. Um, all the products in here. Um, glad to be here today as you've opened this. When did y'all open this? So we opened our store in February of this year. So okay. we've been open now for about eight months. That's great. I was here and did a little ribbon yes. cutting and everything, which was awesome. Um, how you've been, I mean, tell me your history with Ace Hardware. How did you end up there and then end up here? So that's, there's a long, that's a long story. Okay. And I'll make that okay. quick though. So I think I'm going to start with my husband. So sure. my husband and his family have been in the hardware business since 1960. Wow. His family started hardware stores in Ohio in 1960 and my wow. husband, actually grew up in the business okay I myself I started getting involved in the hardware in 1998 wow. I graduated college and I started working with ace hardware on the vendor side okay and I did that for almost 30 years in various marketing and product development roles and uh, it really gave me a great experience to really understand what 
hardware customers need. Okay. Um, and then my first experience with with Fort Worth was actually in 1993. Okay. So growing up, I used to show horses competitively. Okay. And my mom and I came down here from Ohio to uh, show our horses at the. Uh, um, back then, it was the American Quarter Horse Association right. uh, Youth World Show. It was 93, is that it what was you said? It was in 1993, okay. and it was at the John J. Joseph Arena. Yes. But that yes. was my first taste of Fort Worth. Yeah, and, and what do you think about it then? I wanted to be, wanted to stay. Wow. And so you think that was, gosh, how many years ago? Almost, yeah, 30. Nine, <laughs> it was 30 a long time ago. ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I knew then that I wanted to, long term, I wanted to be, to be down here in Texas. Yeah. I wanted to be in the Fort Worth area. So it's funny, every time I, I go down into town, our bank's down in town, um, I go by the arena and uh -huh. I think about that. And even when I drive in in the morning, I can I live a little bit out west, but I can see downtown and I, I think of that often. So it, it's pretty cool. That's a good, great memory. Yeah. Um, and so is your husband from here? Or what? How did you actually finally get here? So that's a great question. Yeah. So my husband and I are both from Northern Ohio. Right. We both grew up in small towns in Northern, different small towns in Northern Ohio where the hardware store is the hub of the community. Yeah. And when we got married about 20 years ago, um, we, it was interesting, we both got married, we both already had the passion for the hardware business, and we knew early on that we wanted to have our own businesses at some point, but we also shared a mutual love of Texas and a mutual love of this area. So it took us a little while, it took us about five years to finally find a location down here and and get the store up and running but um, you know like I said it's been you know almost a 20 20 year journey for mm -hmm. us because we both knew this is some a place that we wanted to live be. that's amazing yeah. that's amazing yeah. the uh, the uh, ace people are probably familiar with ace as a brand is it a franchise or how does that how does that partnership work? So that's a great question. Uh -huh. So A stores are called co-op stores. So okay. what that means is that each A store is individually owned. Okay. So we have other stores in the area that have different owners. And the reason that we do that is because we really want to be able to tailor the needs of the store to the needs of the area. Like one thing that's really unique about the area that we're here that we're in here on Camp Bowie mm -hmm. is is around birding. And by that I mean around birding bird feed and bird, bird feeders. Yeah. Um, this area um, is very Which is passionate. Ridgely Hills, Ridgely North. Exactly. Or yes, yeah, uh. And this area is very passionate about birds. Okay. And um, you'll see if you come into our store that we've actually doubled the size of our bird offering okay. because of that. I see it on the aisle over there, bird, feed, bird seed and everything and else. And it's yeah. so popular. And you'll find other stores, it may not be as popular, but that's why the stores are locally owned or locally owned and operated is because we really do want to tailor to what the, the needs are of our very specific communities. Very community, that's great. Yeah, because you mentioned you know, Westcliff is also in my neighborhood, but that's a separate owner. Right. And other, uh, they're separate owners, so you can really tailor to the community. Exactly. You, you mentioned you've been around for about a year, February or mm -hmm. so. What? What have you seen happen at this location and what are you looking forward to as part of this location? Well, I think one of the most exciting things I've seen, I mentioned, you know, my husband and I grew up in rural parts right. of, of the country where the hardware store was the hub of the community. Mm -hmm. And that was always our vision for our own store is that we wanted it to, to become that hub. Now it's a little bit different, right? Fort Worth is a, is a very large town, but I think what excites us is that we still see that even though, you know, we have a very vast geographical area it's amazing seeing customers come in and they're talking to their neighbors that you know mm -hmm. live down the street from them or we'll even see uh, people that come in and they see their relatives oh, wow. that um, you know they don't see very often. The ones they want to see. Maybe. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Not the ones they were like oh I'm trying to avoid. <laughs> exactly or they come in and they just have these long conversations and so for me that's that's what we wanted to have mm -hmm. for the store. Um, the other thing is around just having our, the team that we have. Mm -hmm. You know, Ace is the helpful place. Right. And when you come to Ace, you 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 want to have help with whatever you're here to look for, or the, or the problem that you're having within your home. And we have an amazing team that is really also tailored to helping um, our customers, you know, solve solve their solve their issues that they may have, and make sure that they can have the best home that they can. That's. In, in beautiful products. You talked a little bit about the community that you're in. Mm -hmm. um, how do you contribute to the community? You, obviously this hub that you talk about where right. people can come and I think you had a, a wine night, did you say, the other night we here? Did. And you're doing some activities, but how do you see yourself fitting into the community, the, the store fitting into the community? So it's really important that we 
we do we are authentically part of the community and so by that I mean that we are actively participating in the community so uh, we make sure that we are participating in events uh, with you know, Ridgely North mm -hmm. um, Neighborhood Association with the Ridgely Hills Neighborhood Association you know and we're trying to get in with other neighborhoods as well that's a big thing we want we want these neighborhood associations to know that we truly want to help you right. um, we're not doing this just to advertise with you like it's a genuine um, we want it to be a genuine partnership an example of that um, last night we had our ladies night out mm -hmm. and we were helping the originally a north uh, neighborhood association put together um, packet uh, there, there are these care packages mm -hmm. for um, homeowners that win their um, I believe it's called the lawn of the month oh yeah yeah, yeah. so you know, we, we very wanted, active program in Ridgely North and, yes. and, and they're very passionate about it and you know we and we had fun. We sat with them for about an hour wrapping up the, the gifts and, and making sure that they were tailored to the homeowners. Another thing that we're doing for Halloween, we're going to be in Ridgely Hills for their Halloween Halloween festival. in the Hills. That's Hall very, very big deal. Yes. So those Will are this be your first one? This is our first one. You'll see. It's it's a yeah. it's a, a very big deal. They block off the streets. It's one of my favorite events oh, that great. I get to go to and attend. So yes. It's great. And another one thing, we, this summer we were involved in the 4th of July parade yes. um, with Ridgely Hills yeah. and that was amazing. We had amazing I love I love floats yes. and the theme was Christmas in July and I, I love Christmas Christmas is my Super Bowl <laughs> um, so we, we had a great time with that so those are things that we want to continue to do um, so I you know I, I look forward to you know neighborhood associations reaching out to me I like to have those discussions with them right. um, even the Camp Bowie district they've yes. been an amazing partner of uh, they, they're, they've done a great job of working uh, on different events al along the, the boulevard and, and we love to partner with them uh, yeah. where we can that's that's great um, you talked a little bit about holidays etc we're mm -hmm. sitting here with a lot of yes. paraphernalia for Halloween yes. and I had see your Christmas aisle, you're already ready for Christmas. Any specific things that you want to talk about or highlight? Well, I think the biggest thing with Ace is you can truly come to Ace for your one-stop holiday shopping needs. You can get everything from a grill to power tools to, you know, beautiful gifts. Right. Um, so I would encourage you, you know, regardless of your budget, I, I'm sure that we can help you find the right gift um, for, what for your holiday. I'd like someone to have a budget for me for the $3,500 <laughs> egg that's sitting over there, but that's beautiful. <laughs> we can maybe make a deal with you. <laughs> no, you've got some great things. Um, thanks for being here. I love yeah. your idea you talk about because I, growing up where I grew up, grew up in Fort Worth, but also in, around the Saginaw area, mm -hmm. we had our, our local, uh, you know, uh, it was Elkins uh, mm -hmm. Hardware. Uh, I remember spending some time in there and just going up and down the aisles looking at all the interesting things. And you know, my family's actually from Gordon originally, and my grandfather had the hardware store. Great, great uncle, great uncle had the hardware store there for a long period of time and it's, it's, a, it's a hub of activity. So yes. I'm glad you're bringing that to this community and love spotlighting. You know, this is a small business, love sm yes. spotlighting small business and small business owners like you. So thanks for being here today, Lori. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in and I hope you enjoyed this episode of Fort Worth Ford. I'm here at Ace Hardware again, come check it out. They've got all you need for any season, any holiday, all these goodies I have in my basket, they're waiting for you. Check it out, y'all have a great season.